You're live. We are live. Hello, world. <laughs> Hello, Nicolette. Hello. Hello, Brendan. How are you? I'm awesome. How are you? I am awesome, too. Actually, really happy. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. You are I happy, pants. <laughs> this is how you call me all the time. <laughs> Why? Because you're always happy. It's just annoying. You know, it's like, how could you just be so happy all the time? <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you remember um, when you came to Budapest for the first time and you got to your hotel and the hotel was really nice, but the location wasn't that much. Uh -huh. And you called me the first night. You were like, I don't understand. How can you be happy in this place? <laughs> there you go. And I was like, well, you get practice. <laughs> I know, but isn't it interesting that it's like um, I I grew up like that, like where it was like it, my my happiness was so um, dictated by my surroundings. It would be like, and I see where I still do this so much, where it's like, well, if if everyone else is going to be unhappy, let me be unhappy too. And it was something that it's like this thing in my world that I see where it's like, well, let me take the lesser thing, like rather than go, oh, you know, people in the world are uh, having whatever they have going on, rather than let me come down to it, what can I be that would actually invite people up to something greater? And mm -hmm. that's taken me years to even get to that because in my world, it seemed to be this thing of almost dishonoring people's, um, people's upset people's sadness people's things like that but how many of us have that that as a point of view hmm. like how cool would it be and one of the demands in my world is it's like i would like to be happy regardless of 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 not regardless but i'd like to be happy without the the reliance on anything else to make me that oh i do like this i I was scrolling on Instagram the other day and Joe Rogan's, one of Joe Rogan's real popped up and he was talking about uh, being happy. And I really liked it. He was like, some people just want to wake up in the morning, have a granola and just that's what makes them happy. Some people want to do yoga all day long and this is what makes them happy. And some people want to hide in an office and create something amazing because that's what makes them happy. Yeah. And there is no rules. And there are no, you know, like, you can be happy anyways. But I think most of us, we never ask the question, like, what's my reality? What makes me happy? And for me, I remember, um, I, I never knew what would make me happy. I wasn't a happy person before. So I like when you... Me, call me. Me. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right and i i really like when you call me happy pants it always makes me laugh and smile and give me a smile because i know i wasn't a happy person and if i could change it everyone can because i was really deep so for so long and for so many reasons and what i realized over the years is that all, all these questions and just um discovering what makes me happy it's um it makes me feel alive i remember the very first time i i met, when i asked myself the question like what would i want my life to be like in five years and i remember sitting on the tram going to work and just journaling and writing down everything and i remember that was the first time when i kind of get the sense of an other reality and i was asking questions and it made me feel so alive and if I look back for my my life didn't change for six months or a year nothing really changed but the inside as I was living was different I wasn't unhappy anymore I I, I loved the spring when it came and I was just walking with my fucked up leg uh, with my scratches and I was like I was just like I could sense this the sense of possibilities I had the sense of them. Yeah. And I would, that was so amazing. And wow. Yeah. And I really think about this, not like thinking about it, but it's like this feeling, like this awareness comes to me really often recently. 
like where I, I started and what my life was and then just starting using the tools how my my life changed in the inside and oh, I, I just really like to think about it I'd really like to just remember that it was amazing yeah, and my that, whole life has changed yeah yeah I noticed and it's like you know one of the things that you said there too is um people don't ask that thing of what is my reality yeah you know, which is for me, I know that if I'm trying to do things like anyone else, I'm in that, that is a source for unhappiness, you know, but it takes, um, that's, it takes courage to actually go, wow, if I had no one else to rely on and, and it wasn't about finding my way through other people's choices, what is actually true for me? Like, I remember, um, man, I have done this so much of like, can someone just tell me, can someone just give me an idea of like what it is that my life should be? Like, give me a roadmap, give me something because the idea of like trusting myself or actually going on that journey was like almost, I, I would say terrifying, you know, yeah. and, and all these different things come up for all of us. It's like, you know, you might have a, I know for a lot of people um, and especially through COVID, this thing come up, came up of loneliness like if mm -hmm. I don't have people in my life, then I'm all alone. And, you know, and it's like, for me, because, you know, one of the tools we talk about in access is what's light is what's true for you. and What's heavy is what's alive for you. Right. But for me, when I look at that, like when I look for the lightness of energy, if I'm in question with myself of not how do I, um, cause see for a lot of us, what we do with that is, well, then, in order to find my reality, I need to exclude everybody else. But what if it wasn't about excluding everybody else? What if you just didn't have to include everybody else's um, ideas about life, every everybody else's points of view about life in yours in order to find yours? And, you know, and I know for me, um, one of the things that was... Um, one of the things where this really hit home 12 months ago when I had my, you know, big change in life and when the this stuff came up for me with alcoholism, you know, and I really had to look at it was the, I remember this conversation with Gary and one of the things that's just hit me like a bolt of lightning was he said, you, I cannot help you with this. You have to do this on your own. And when he said that, it was the first time I sat with it and just was like, holy shit, like I can't, I can't actually rely on anybody else to get me out of this. I can't actually rely on every, anybody else to, to help me, to save me, to fix me. This is going to be about me and this is going to be about me finding my strength. And it was like, even thinking about that now, I'm like, and thinking like tapping into that moment when he said that I was like, wow, but it's like, but what if it was that? What if you are truly the only person that, that mm -hmm. can, can find it, that can go on that journey for you? Mm. Uh, I, I like that you named this conversation, new beginnings, a new beginning. Um, because I, um, I have a really interesting journey now so we got to the point with my business and with my life and with everything that we're growing so fast is like we're doubling and tripling everything in in a month or or even less and and everything is so fast i can't even like i'm just choosing and like i don't i don't even know what i'm doing anymore and it's really chaotic and it's really like uncomfortable right now but at the same time it's like I know where I want to go and I finally am willing to go that even if no one follows, if, if no one comes and I finally get to the point where I find people who are, who are aware of the same thing that I am and they want to go. Yeah. Isn't that part huge though? That like that one thing of, I know where I want to go. Like I know where I'm going. Yeah. I always, um, here's a part with that because there's there's somewhere and i'm just going to say it how it is because there's somewhere in my world still and i see this where i have big doubt with that 
like mm. where I go, I know where I want to go, but like, you know, and, and it's more of a, not so much a thinking thing, but it's more of an energy of like, what is that? But then I look at like, when you say that, um, or, I, and I see Gary Douglas as one person, he, he goes, I know where I'm going. That's it. Period. I'm going for more consciousness on this planet. That's where I'm going. And I admire that. Like I see it in you and I see it in him and I see it in other people. But I say that because um, we tend to listen to this thing of like, if you're listening to this live, you might be like, well, I actually don't really know where I want to go, but it kind of lights my world up when I hear you say it. Well, the thing with that is if you admire something or see something like that in somebody else, you are it too. You just mm -hmm. haven't been choosing it. And for a lot of us, what we tend to do is we listen to that negative we listen to that, you know, that voice in your head that it's like, you don't know where you want to go. You're not going to be happy. You're never going to get there. And it's like, I know I'm not, you know, and it's like, you know what, you know, I'm going to actually start listening to what I, I'm aware of and be, being that, but it's like, what if you could see that in somebody else? Like mm. the, you know, the thing that you talk about with business with, you know, things are doubling and tripling and I'm like, Oh, I'll have that too. Like, what if we really could, we, we started with, we started this conversation with that thing with happiness, right? Where yeah. it's like, we go, Oh, well, let me come down to, let me like, but you, you're all suffering. Let me suffer too. Like, what if we truly could look to the greatness in the world and go, wow, what would it take for me to have that too? Mm -hmm. Where am I that, that I'm not acknowledging? What would it take for me to be more of that? So that it's like someone like you, that, um, and for all of you listening, have it somewhere to some degree, you just haven't acknowledged it. That part, that's a whole different conversation, but that <laughs> willingness to be that beacon of light that only you can be, which is so interesting to me because it's like you would, man, do I get it? I, do I get what it is like to, to have no sense of what that is to be like me, a beacon of light in the world. Like what the fuck are you talking about? Like, how could I be that? Um, well, how can you not mm -hmm. like each and every one of us is different like that. And I don't even know what I'm getting to with that, but I would, no, actually, I would that. like to, like I do say it because I see so much value in that and I see where, I see where for a lot of us, we don't value it. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. I just let it in. <laughs> I just let it in. Um, and also what I see is that this is just the beginning for all of us. Yeah. And th that's what I feel every morning when I wake up is like, th this is just the beginning. We haven't missed anything because that was my point, you know, before I met these tools, I was a, like, I'm still, but I was just like a nobody unhappy. And, you know, I was living in the suburbs and trying to make any money, I don't know, enough money to afford to my rent and food. And I was just filling up my needs with the money I was making. That was it. I, I never thought beyond that. I was always just thinking, oh, I need money for this. I need money for that. Oh, I have to pay that. Oh, and I, I really would like to buy new shoes. And I kind of created it, but like I never created more because I wasn't asking for more. Yeah. Because no That's one told me that. before is like, hey, ask for more. And for me, I was asking for so many things when I heard this for the first time. No, for the first time, I was like, Am I allowed to ask more? I'm like, sure. Like, I was told, like, hey, that's enough. Like, stop it. <laughs> don't, don't you think you want too more or uh, too much? And I was like, well, yeah, kind of, but I can have more. And then it just, it wasn't, they kind of killed this um, muscle that I had for asking for more when I was a kid. And then I ended up being a person who, who was like, well, oh my God, I, I went to Barcelona for a weekend and I was kind of hiding it because what people would think and like, oh, I can't tell them how much I have, but it was just nothing according to what I have now. 
but I was always hiding, hiding myself and like, oh, I don't, I, I should not have this much. And, and that was, and you know, also uh, when I did the foundation class, so when you do the foundation class, you are allowed to buy the reference materials. So what I did real quick, I bought them and I went through everything. I wanted to know everything. And I, I read one sentence, Gary said that your life begins when you, when you stop creating the money to pay the bills and filling up, filling up your needs. And I, somehow, you know, you get it when you get it, but I got it. And I was like, oh, fuck, this is why I don't have anything because that's, that's it. That's what I think. I'm like, okay, rent, food, clothing, that's it. <laughs> and when I, I realized, I'm like, oh, but I want more. So then I was looking for more and asking for more. And somehow, like bit by bit, not like it wasn't a b one big choice that changed everything. It was like a, a many small choices that led me to having more. Yeah, true story. That part's huge because that's where a lot of people give up on themselves. Like you'd see, <laughs> and this is why, like I... I like, I love your um, story, quote unquote, and, you know, and, and different people who have those stories of like, you would see someone like where you're at now and be like, and, you know, people would go, I could never get to that. Well, you've just, there you go. You never will, but put quite bluntly, you never will with that as a point of view. And that's what we have to get as well as our point of view creates our reality, but just how much power we have to create it, you know? So that thing of, um, that thing of it's not one big choice. Like you have made millions of choices to change your life. Like, and for, for, for all of us, you know, we've all done that in, in, in different ways, but, um, you know, the thing that I liked that you said, um, T towards the beginning was it wasn't about my life wasn't showing up different from the outside. No. I was, I had a different sense about me and, you know, and that's, <laughs> we, we all just like more of that, like, you know, like where it wasn't about how much we put, how much energy we put into how we appear from the outside. How's my life showing up from the outside? How do I look on social media? Yeah. How do I, you know, how do I show up in the world? How do people see me? How do, you know, like, what are people going to think about me? What are people going to judge me as? And it's like, fuck, what if the one of you, like, and I know this for me now is way more, um, is I really care about what I think about me. Hmm. If that's in check, then the world gets what the world gets. But it's like, but what would it be like, like for people, if you're listening to it, like, what would that be like to have that sense of, you know, what, what do I think about me? Like, what would I like to have as my point of view about me? And um, I had something else I wanted to say to that, but then I just forgot because <laughs> welcome to my brain right now. Yes. <laughs> to my um, I don't know what I was going to say, but, but that, like the, that, that thing of, um, that, there you go. Mm -hmm. That's my head. Yeah. That, no, no worries. I, um, so this is what always like, because when I think about my happiness, mm -hmm. um, now, and, and I don't know why, but recently that I was looking back to my life when it was like 2016, when I took my, my first class and I heard these questions from Andras and I was just using them. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just writing, 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 writing. And um, you know my story that I had an accident, blah, blah, blah. And I was at home for months. I couldn't leave my home because my leg was broken. And... I remember that I was so happy. I was just so happy, but I had no reason to be happy because I didn't know what's going to happen to my life. I, I, I didn't know if I can walk again. I didn't know how I can afford next month to my rent. I didn't, I didn't know anything. I used to be a hairdresser. I had no money when I stopped working because of the accident. And 
because I was at home and I somehow created this space for myself for the very first time in my life, which had less judgment and less, you know, expectations. So many of the magic could show up, like so magical things happened to me, like money just came from, from ways like I couldn't expect. And so when I, my doctor told me, hey, Nicolette, you have to go back to work next month because we can't keep you home anymore. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> I have to go back. I have to meet people. I don't want to meet people. I'm happy home. And because when I was home, my friends, they were like, hey, uh, I can come by tonight. I can just visit you. I'm like, uh, I don't really have time today. I'm busy. And they're like, are you busy? Like I at home for six months now. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, ah, I'm listening to these videos and I'm trying to learn English. And then like, I really wanted to go through this video of day in here and all this stuff. And, and when my doctor put me back on work, I went back. And what I realized now that I look back is the magic started to disappear hmm. because my word was like this when I was home. And as I went back to work, I met people and I was listening to their points of views, limitations and everything. Like I realized my, my word was like going back this big. And at some point I was like, what, what happened here? Like the magic is, is gone. Like what is my magic? Like my, my life used to be magical. And when I think about it now, I see, oh, what happened was when I was by myself, I had less judgment and less points of views. And then when I went back to, to be around people, it, it was gone. And so I was like, well, okay. So I have to be able, have to be willing to be able to, to be that space, even though when I am around people. And then that was the time when I was like, okay, I'm committing now. I'm going to be a tool junkie. I have nothing left, only these tools. What if I'm, use, I'm, I'm using them? And, and then I realized, okay. And, and finally, I was able to get more space. But it's, it's still now. And I know this is funny, but when I'm by myself, I got this space. Everything is possible. No one can stop me. All these ideas and everything comes to me. And then when I'm around people, I'm like, oh, what is magic? <laughs> what like, oh, no, people. People, no, as Dane used to say, oh, people are so people -y. but it's so yeah. true. It's like, ah, what happened to me? And, um, and so this is what I'm doing every morning. I don't know what is your morning routine, but I really want to know. But mine is I expand myself and I do it many times a day. And I have a membership and we all do many times a day. We are like, we have a hashtag for it. And when someone puts the hashtag into the Telegram group, we all get together kind of energetically and we expand together, like, I don't know, 10 times a day. And it's just so amazing. It's like a different yeah. way of being to get your space back. And, in, and that's my big question now every morning when I wake up, like, what would it take to get my, my space, to get to be the space who I really am? And it's huge. And I didn't know before. I'm like, space, what about space, 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 space. And then now I'm getting is like, when I have more space, there is space for magic, there is space for creativity, there is space for new ideas, there is space for creation and happiness and everything. And that's what we need to create more space. True story. And that's what I love about the tools because that thing of like, you know, it's easy to be alone and be like, you know, one of the things yes. you said was it's like I had more magic when I had less expectations, you know, and less points of view and less of all of those things that create that lack of space. But then it's like we get around people and it's like, ah, you know, where did my space go? But it's like, but how much we, um, how much our awareness of everybody else and where they function from becomes what we decide is the um, b basically again is that le is that lesser thing that we go to, but that thing of having that around people, like having that space, having wow, I've got far less expectations now, even when I'm out around people, that's mm -hmm. a gift. But it's like, um, 
that once again, like you've said, is that that occurs over years and years of using these tools, like of being, you know, one of the tools, interesting point of view. I have this point of view about every point of view that comes up. It's like that one, that one tool alone, um, you know, for me, I remember when I first started Access and it was like, oh, you know, like interesting point of view. I have this point of view. And allowance for me was selective, right? So allowance... <laughs> Allowance was a selective process. It was like, well, I'll have allowance for this person, but not for this person. And I'll have allowance for this, but I won't have allowance for me. And, you know, and it was more of this thing of um, acceptance, right? And so that thing with, a, with, with true allowance, the willingness to be something different, like actually be allowance. And that like... I, I'm having a very interesting time with words today, but there you go. But it's like that, um, the, the, the thing that you've said, like it, it began with that thing of, I'm going to have more of that, like really that demand of yourself. And, and I know this for me too, where it's like, I don't know how to get there. I don't know what it's going to take, but I'm going to have that. I'm going to have that space. That's true for me. Even when I'm out around people, and I think it's one of the things that we really don't value a lot is the um, demand that we're willing to put on ourselves. Like if you want your life to, if you want something in, in your life to change, it begins with that demand you're willing to have of you. Like, you know what, this has to change. What, whatever it takes, whatever I've got to get to for me, whatever tool I've got to use, whatever question I've got to be, this is changing whatever that takes. And I think like, I'm like, I have things going off in my world today and even having this conversation with you, because I see, like, I look at that for me and I go, okay, so where am I not being that? Like, where could I be more of a demand? Even for that thing of, um, cause I know for me when my, um, when my, when I don't have so much of that sense of space, you know, when it's just like oh, kind of like ticking boxes and, you know, moving through it, my world is not big enough. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've gone into something that is more, that is far too normal for me. And I say this because I see where a lot of us do it. It's like where it's like, well, let me, um, let me make it about making more money or let me make it about just having a better relationship or let me make it about that. And it's like, so it becomes this defined kind of thing that you're already looking to rather than I know, I know this for me personally is when um, I have so much more of what's true for me is when it's a bigger demand, hmm. you know, like it's where it's like, wow, I demand to actually show up as more of what's true for me or, you know, I demand to, to have way more of a um, way more kindness with myself or I demand, you know, I'm, and it's not like I demand, but it's like, you know what, I'm having that, which is what choice actually is, which for a lot of us, we, you know, the way that choice actually works is a whole other topic, but that really is the beginning of it. I'm, I'm having that. And I've heard you say many times in this conversation of like that thing of, you know, what, I'm having it. My life is changing. I'm having this and I'm not stopping myself or letting anything stop me to get there. And I just think like there's certain things like that, that I really see that we, um, it's so much easier than we think. Yes. You know, like it really is it's so much easier than we think. Yeah. I, I, I remember those days because, um, my word used to be like this big, but somehow yeah. I always had a kind of a sense of I could have more, but I Me never so. chose to. <laughs> yes. And then my word was this more, you know, drinking and drugs and not nice things that much. And I remember that um, this accident just, just um, put me out of my comfort zone in many ways and I was seeking for something else. Like I, I really could see that, okay, this is not going to work, work. And I could see that 
somehow life has another plan with me. Like I, I should have something like I, I couldn't put it into words, but like, that was my sense. I'm like, I should have something. And this is not what I'm, I'm here for. And it's not like karma or something, but it's more like we all have some gifts and talents that we never thought that we do have. Yeah. And we all do have all those gifts. And I remember my one of my first facilitators, Angela, the first foundation I took with her, she was like, hey, Nicola, talk, talk to people. And I'm like, I can't do that because once I did, I had a speech I said yes to. It was so bad that a friend of mine was in the crowd. And when I sit, sit down, she was like, that was the worst thing I ever heard. Like, you should not do this. And I'm like, yeah, I agree. And I was like, we both were ashamed. It's like, oh, that was bad. But you know what happened? I got ready for that. I was prepared. I had um, I had a whole uh, presentation with slides. So I got really <laughs> ready. And then when I got there, I looked at my presentation. I was like, well, I can't really remember when I was putting in this verse in here, what I wanted. <laughs> And I failed, but now I see I, I didn't. What happened was I can't be prepared. I just go there and I talk anything that comes through me. And yeah. that's my way. And some people like to get prepared and they like slides and good for them. But it's not for me. I'm different. And, you know, from that experience, I could make myself so wrong and say, how like, stop myself and quit. But then... Also, I was so lucky to have all these people who, who didn't let me to go down that road. They were like empowering me, saying they could see something in me, what I couldn't see in myself. And I know your own story, the same for you. It's like Gary saw something in you that you was you were not able to see yet back then. And, and so I was like, talk to people like, what? I do. I'm like, who would listen to me? Like, I'm just an idiot. <laughs> and, and then somehow it's, it's, I started to do something and I was talking and then talking and then talking more. And then I put myself into this really uncomfortable situations. I was failing many times. Like sometimes one time someone asked me to, to just lead a conversation between runners and I didn't even know what I'm doing, but I said, yes. I was like, well, the slide, I'm coming. I did it. And I was not prepared and I didn't even know who these people were. And I failed and everybody in the crowd, they were ashamed for me too. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, and I could stop myself there too. And I was like, well, what's the gift in this? And I was like, well, what's the gift, Nicolette? Is that you get prepared when you are talking to five people who are runners and then you kind of know something about running, right? Like, or just prepare your questions. And, and somehow I was like, well, and I, I didn't stop myself even then. I was like, okay, this is really bad, but I keep going. And so <laughs> I kept going and I failed many other times and I just had an, I don't know, program with my membership and we had 200 people in the room and who were sitting on the first line um, they were like, Hey, are you I, I, excited or nervous or something? And I'm like, me, why would I, when it's over a hundred person or people, I'm good. <laughs> when it's below, I'm kind of nervous because it's just 50 people and they will judge me. But when it's 200, I don't care anymore. So it's, um, it's really interesting to just, so it's three things, I guess, when you begin is like, you never quit even though you fail and you will and that's fine too and you get awareness and ask like what's the what's what's the gift in this like i like what is good about this i'm not getting and then the other thing is is like truly asking for people who were who will always um empower you even though you can see the gift in you and asking for those people and and just be willing to be that for others also. Yeah, I love that. You know, and that thing of never giving in, like never giving up, never stopping, that that part, that part alone is huge when you get to those things. Because that thing of what's the gift in this? Like I heard, um, you know, I heard one of the things I heard Gary say forever that I was just like, what? I was so like just, it, it just never made sense to me at all 
was what if the greatest wrongness of you is the greatest strongness? Mm. <laughs> and I was like, how can that mm. be? Like, I am so wrong with everything. How is there any strength in that? And um, it wasn't until recently with what I've been through in my life that I've really started to get that because the strength the, the, the strength that comes from something when you're not, when you don't have to judge it, when you're actually willing to be in question with it of like, what is the gift in this? Oh, wow. I actually just got that I'm capable of this or wow. I actually get that there's something else here that I haven't been acknowledging. And you don't know what that is, but it's like, if that was a question for everything that you're in judgment of yourself for, for example, and it's like, what? Everything that you go to that automatic thing of, well, what's wrong here? No, what's the gift here? Yeah. It's almost like it, it seems like counterintuitive. Like you're like, what? Like what gift? Wrong? Like what, what, what? Yeah, but if you didn't have the judgment of it, what is the strength in it? Mm. And that thing of just, going you know going and there was something else that um because that thing of new beginnings right yes um that's the that other part of this where it's like where it truly is like what if this was just the beginning is it's like having that as a point of view also eliminates that thing of how do i get this right you know, oh, I've, I've finally gotten to this place where I can talk to a certain amount of people. Okay, good. Like, I finally have arrived. Now, how do I make that right and stop it? You know, rather than it's like, okay, cool. What next? Like, if everything was a new beginning. Hmm. And, um, you know, which is another thing we've talked about forever. And And so I bring these things up as well now because these are tools that I really, um, I've been doing access for, 13 years that maybe 14 years right wow. and um there was i know i'm just a dinosaur <laughs> <laughs> really but I, bring, I bring some of these like there's there's things like this that you and i are talking about that that are in the beginning you know classes right bars class foundation class these tools i really 12 months ago when my um my life really changed I revisited these in a different way. Mm. Like one of the things is, you know, not letting your past define you, which is basically um, like, who am I today? If I, if it wasn't about bringing yesterday forward into today, who am I today and what grand and glorious adventures can I have? I had to begin to learn how to live from that. Mm. Otherwise for me, you know, like I was, there was, so much of this, um, I kind of want to say like shame and wrongness in my world that unless I had that, like unless I had that as the tool I was going to, then it was like this vacuum backwards, you know, but, but so it's, um, I don't even know what I want to get to with that, but basically it's like, like what if you're, what if it was okay to be at where you're at right now and acknowledge it? Like even that alone, because the, there's one of the biggest gifts for me was the, was to begin to have the willingness to look at everything from a different perspective, right? Because both you and I have had these, you know, we've had stuff with drugs, alcohol, um, things like that, man, 12 months ago, I, to be honest, um, I didn't think I was going to get out of it. Hmm. You know, I really didn't. And, you know, and I, and it's, I don't say that on this to be like significant or anything. I say it from an acknowledgement of it. It took every tool that I could get. Hmm. It took every ounce of strength that I had to actually get present with that without this thing of what's wrong. Because as soon as we go to that, you're fucked and not in a good way. You know, you really are. You go like, it's like, but to really be present with it and go, okay, what is the gift in this? Like, if we could look at those things, like, and you could look at the things in your life that kind of, you kind of get where it's like, oh, I don't know if there's a way out of that. Or you have somewhere in your world where you think it's not changeable. Well, 
judgment doesn't create any more ease with that, you know? Yeah. So when you're willing to look at it and go, okay, like I'm at where I'm at right now. What's the gift in this that I'm not acknowledging? What could I acknowledge about myself that I, that it, that would allow me to actually be with this from a space of what if I didn't have to hide anything from myself? You know, how much stuff do we hide from ourselves that we've already decided is the wrongness of us? Hmm. And, and for me with that, it's like how much power do we keep hidden from us with that judgment? Hmm. I really like what, when you said, uh, what would it take for my past not to define me? Yeah. Wow. That was well, that was something that I had to, um, you know, begin to to start living as well because it's like, and I see even now, um, I see even now where it's like this thing of, you know, where you um, like where you have something in your world, and it might be some choice you've made or something that you've done that was that really became some part of the way that you define yourself. For me, you know, alcohol was a big thing with it because it's mm -hmm. like. And, and it became such a dynamic part of my story, hmm. you know, and, and so for me coming out of it and being, um, you know, doing the work that I've done to, to be different, to really be different with it. Um, I've seen where the, where I've still tried to hold on to that thing of not the alcohol, not the event, but the story of it. And I looked at this, this became, this only became way more present in my world like a few weeks ago when I was looking at this. And I was like, because there was this thing of, well, but if I, like so many different elements to it, but it was like, if I let go of that, then um, if I let go of that, then, and let go of that wrongness of myself, then who the fuck am I? Like if I truly let go of my story, if I truly let go of my past and didn't have it as something that defined me, who would I be without that wrongness? But so I say that because if, if we, how much do we define ourselves by what we can judge in us? Hmm. You know, wow. so hmm. like, and way too much, but, um, <laughs> So here's here's the thing I want to do with this, right? Because we've got the clearing statement with access. I want to use it because it because I can. Um, <laughs> but basically, one of because this is all brought up different things with, and I'm very grateful for this conversation. One of the things is presumptive <laughs> realities, right? Yeah, we wanted to talk about that. Can we get into a little well, bit? This has been a perfect lead-in. See, <laughs> it's always no. a plan. There's always a plan to this thing. Um, <laughs> But so presumptive realities basically is where you presume what reality is. You have a presumption about what reality is. This is the way it's going to be. Therefore, that's all that can show up because that's what you'll create based on it. You know, and we do it with so many things in our lives. But if we look at this um, example that I just gave specifically, because I think that we can all probably relate to that in some way where it's like, wow, if I actually let go of the wrongness of me, what? Like, you're like, who would I be? But yeah. how, so how many presumptive realities do you have? Hey. With <laughs> how many presumptive realities do you have with yeah. what that would look like? Hmm. Everything that is times a godzillion where you destroy and uncreate it. Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pack, all night, horse, boys, poets, and beyond. Here, you're pot packer to, to today. I like it. <laughs> I, I, it's wonderful but this bit this has been um you know this just became a big part of the of access really in the foundation class because it's like if you if you look at your life how many of these presumptive realities you have in place that allow that to be all that you can create like if we look at um a big one for pretty much all of us is money yeah. you know and you'd look at the thing of like um, you'd look at like I grew up with a lot of um, it was money was an impossibility, right? It wasn't even a, it was like money, like what is money? Money was almost like 
you would, if you're talking to me about money, you're basically reading me a fairy tale that could never exist anyway. So I'm just like, la, 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 money is all I'm hearing, <laughs> you know? And it was like, but there was never any, um, I never, I, I just had so many different points of view about it, but all of these presumptive realities, it takes hard work to make it. You're always going to lose it. You're never going to have enough. You're never going to have it. You're always going to run out. It, the list is endless. So all of those, all the presumptive realities that you have with that, all of you, um, with money, just money, money, money. We just join and create all that. Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all night, shores, boys, and beyonds. But how many presumptive realities do you have about you? And I don't mean you, I mean everyone. I know. When I'm I talking like, well, to the world. You know, it's... Yeah. it's and it's, but uh, I'm glad we brought the tool up there because it's like, it's not something that it's like, we could talk about that for hours, but, but I, I wanted to give you guys the tools, the tool as well, because it's like, if you have something like basically anything that's coming up in your world that you're in conclusion with, how many presumptive realities do I have with this? Pock and pod, right and wrong, good and bad, pod and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, povads and beyonds. Hmm. How many presumptive realities do you have? Here we go. How many presumptive realities do you have that don't allow you to have, that don't um, allow you to have what joy and happiness is for you? Hmm. How many presumptive realities do you have with what it takes to be happy? Everything that is times a godzillion where you destroy and create it. Hmm. Right and wrong, good and bad, pod and pock, all nine shorts, boys, povads and beyonds. Wow. I just realized that the live didn't go through my page. That's why I'm looking down. Oh. But yeah. there's lots of people here that are um uh people like texting you and saying what why mm -hmm. are Am I not on there? Yeah, but I'm going to share now. Okay. <laughs> and then people can look it after. Yeah, sorry. I just realized I was I was sure that it's live, but it wasn't. But now I posted. We are live on my page too. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. Um. <laughs> so what else? I wonder. Like, I'm like. Uh, I know you and I both have some stuff coming up that we wanted yes. to mention. Yes. Um, yes. 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 Which is the this, you know, basically the all the foundation class. You know, you've got the bars class coming up, and then the foundation class. I've got a foundation class as well. But it's like those tools which we've basically have been talking about throughout this, and what we've been using, what we've used on our journey. And it's like that class. I remember the first time right that I took that foundation class, and. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I had done my bars class the day before and I was like, and Gary Douglas was coming to Brisbane, what, right near where I live to do a, a choice of possibilities class. I needed the foundation as a prereq. And so I said to this girl who was doing my, who was teaching my bars class, I was like, how do I do this? And she was like, look, there's this facilitator. She might help you out. Give her a call. And I called this, I called this girl and she was like, well, I was like, look, I got a full-time job. Like, you know, and she's like, okay, so look, why don't you come here from 6 p? Why don't you come here at 6 p.m. after work? So I would go there and we were doing this class um, from 6 p.m. until midnight for the four days before Gary arrived <laughs> so that I could get there. But I remember basically she was like, she was asking me questions and using these processes and different things. I had no clue what she was talking about, but everything made sense to me energetically. And I never forget those four days because it's like my world was changing and I was just getting like happier and getting like more of that um, exuberant energy that I am. And she's like, and she's just going, and she, you know, she's using this clearing statement and stuff. But what I realized was also it was the first time I actually had somebody in my life, somebody there for me that had my back that was just like, you know what, I'm here with you and you've mm -hmm. got this. And that's one of the things that I um, 
really value about that with like in seeing whether where facilitators it's facilitators are willing to be that but also be, people who are willing to be that in the world where it's like hey like i get it and i get you're in judgment of you i, I really get that but i'm here for you i don't see you that way I don't see you the way that you see you. And it's like, and you know, that thing we talked about before of like having a bigger, um, having a bigger ask, like looking at, because see, a lot of us have a presumptive reality as well about what a bigger world is, mm. a bigger universe. You know, you talked about that thing of my universe was this big and, and, but I want a bigger world. Well, a lot of us stop that with the presumptive reality. Bigger world is more money. Bigger world is bigger house. Bigger world is, you know, better relationship and all of that stuff. But it's like, what what if it's not? So all the presumptive realities you have with all of that, will you just join and create it? Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and back, all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. Wow. But, but for me, like, <laughs> I say that because for me, the only, the thing that matches it is when I go with the energy of what a bigger world is for me is like, what would it be like if more of us were willing to be that for us, you know, and be that in the world of, you know, what, I get it. I get whatever you've got going on and I don't see you that way. Hmm. I get that you see you that way. I don't see you that way. And hmm. it's like that thing of interesting point of view that we talked about before a little bit, um, that degree of like that willingness to be in allowance like that, one of the greatest gifts for our world you know that willingness to show up in the world and go you know what i get it i've been on my journey too i have my shit going on too i get we're all on our own journey but i get there's a lot of us who desire to actually have a greater world mm. how do we support each other in that mm. yeah i had the same experience with um andras and angela i took the first foundation with them and I, so that I was, a, my, yes, <laughs> how lucky I am. I and know. that was the first time I remember I, 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 I came into class and, and I started to make myself wrong and they didn't let me do so. And I really, it, I find really annoying that anytime I try to make myself wrong, Angela somehow managed it that she was showing me that this is something that is a strongness of me. And I was like, I hate this. I'm like, I'm trying to make myself wrong here. Like, let me do so. And she's like, no, no. And everything, like I was like, hey, I am so judgy. I want to, I, I just don't want to be judgy. I remember we, so she's living in Segad, which is, I don't know, 200 kilometers from Budapest. And she had the class there. And I was really happy. Like I could escape from Budapest and like, you know, having a nice hotel and just being there. And I remember uh, we arrived the day before and we went out. It was like, a, I don't know, a square with a couple coffees. And I was sitting there with a friend of mine and we were like, oh my God, did you see that lady? How big her ass is? Like, why would people dress like this if they're so fat? And like, this was going on and on and on. And then at some point we were like, what are we doing? Like we are going to take a conscious class tomorrow and we're judging everyone. And so we got to class and Angela was like, okay, if you could get anything out of this class, what would it be? And I'm like, oh my God, I am so judgy. And she's like, I, do you think you're judging? I'm like, I am so judgy. And she's like, what, why? And I told her, I'm like, hey, we just arrived yesterday. We were sitting at the square, uh, at the coffee, coffee, and we were judging everyone. Like we were saying, like, "Oh, this woman looks shitty, and this is so fat, and this is blah." blah, blah. And she's like, "Can I have a question?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." She's like, "Are you judging them, or are you just aware the judgment that they have about themselves, and then?" you just say that loud, which, and I was like, fuck, the last one. That was the judgment of themselves. And I was just aware of them. And she's yep. like, yeah, so, so how funny that we use this to actually judge ourselves that we are judgy. Yeah. 
But and like, and once again, what? presumptive reality, th- 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 this is how that thing goes too. Presumptive reality that every judgment that you have is yours. You know, and that one was, that one's huge because it's like that even to fathom that you might actually be aware of where other people like are judging themselves. And you're like, so yeah, that, that part, it's like, <laughs> you're like, you mean I'm not actually judgmental? Yes. And, and that was, that was when uh, it blowed my mind. I was like, excuse me, I was judging people and now it turned out I can't even judge. I'm like, what? Like, this is, it just doesn't make any sense to me, to my brain, but it made actually sense to my being. Yeah. And that, and that uh, was, yeah. And, and I kind I finally got, I'm like, wow, what if, if actually everything is the opposite? Oh, uh, what I thought before. And, and it, that was so cool. And, and that showed me, and even now in my classes, I, it was so inspiring to me what they were being, Andras and her, that in my classes, it's, I really am, I really just want to be that to, to the people who come to my class. I love to that. Just, just have the space when they are not judged for anything they are. Yep. Hey, that's, that's the world I'd like to live in. That's the world yes. I'd like to create more of. And it's Me like, too. you know, and that, that is a choice, you know, that we all have too of, it's like, you know, the thing of, we've talked a lot about this thing of, in this of being in question of, you know what, I'm having that is what if it really was as simple as that going, you know what, I'm having way less judgment. You know, I'm going to, I'm having that. And it really is like the things that have shown up with the greatest ease in my world is when it has been from that thing of I'm having that, what's it going to take for me to get there? What have I got to choose? What have I got to be? What have I got to change? Um, but if you want more, you can come and check us out. We're going to be you know, facilitating because we're going to get off this thing because now I've got people texting me saying they're trying to check lines and blah, blah, blah on this other thing. <laughs> Don't worry. I have another thing. Zoom call in two minutes. So, I do too. <laughs> um, so hold on. So, so Brandon, uh-huh. you're coming to Budapest. I am. And when, when do you come and what do you do? Tell us. Well, that's a good question. I, I arrive on the 3rd, but I think I've got foundation starts on the 5th. So I've got foundation class starts on the 5th, and then the following weekend I've got a three-day body class. Um, so on the 12th, 13th, and 14th. Yeah, and we can put, you know, hopefully someone's putting, like, links into yes, comments. Yes, I think stuff, Mel but, will do so for yeah. you. Yes, and I when do have a part. Uh, yeah, my classes are in Hungarian, so... I have a huge bar class in Budapest, 330 people. Um, yeah, but it's only in Hungarian. And that's going to be on this weekend, on the 15th. So we are closing the registration tonight, midnight. And then the next week on Thursday, I start my foundation in Hungarian only here in Budapest. So yes. come guys, play. And uh, yeah, we are, we are so lucky that you are coming here. So I can't, can't wait. wait. I love I love Budapest. I love Hungary. Yeah, you know? Budapest likes you too. So I come. I don't know what that is, but there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone.